Hi, in today's video, we're going to take a look at a portrait that looks really nice, just fresh out of camera. However, there's always just a little bit more that we can do. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at Nick color effects to see what we can do just to enhance this photo quickly, easily, and just kind of bring it up to uh, a nice professional look. Hi, my name is William Beam. I'm a portrait photographer in Central Florida. And if this is your first time here, welcome. And if you're coming back after having watched our videos before, thank you so much. Welcome. I appreciate you coming back. Today, we're taking a look at Nick Color Effects for a quick and dirty portrait. At the time I'm recording this, it's March 2021. And through March 28th, Nick is having a sale for 30% off. So you can get color effects. Instead of $149, it is $99.99. I'll have a link below and I'll put it up here, but basically you go to williambeam.com slash Nick and you can save up to 30% on Nick software and some of the other DxO software. So, all right, why don't I go ahead, bring up a photo and let's get started. Okay, I'm in Photoshop. I've got this portrait and we've got a nice person here with a lovely smile. There's a couple of things that we can fix up here and I think that you almost don't notice it when you look at the portrait just the way it is, but if we go in a little bit closer and deeper, I think we can do some things with skin enhancement. I think we can lighten the teeth up just a bit. And there's just a couple of other touches we can do. So why don't we go ahead, we'll go up to the filter menu and I'm going to come down here to Nick Collection and select Color Effects Pro 4. So Nick comes up in its own user interface like so many plugins do. And let me just go ahead and stretch this out so we can see the whole thing. And right off the bat, you can see that it's going ahead and it's trying to apply something over here with these recipes. Uh, this is from En Vogue. And there's different collections over here. You can see all of the recipes. I'm not really going to be working with the recipes. So what I want to do is I just want to come over here and I'm going to click X on this to get rid of that. And what I want to do is apply my own filter. So it says, please select a filter from the filter list. We'll come over here. We'll collect on We'll click on filter library and there are some presets over here like if i want to look at just portrait filters i'm going to leave the list open so we can see all of them and take a look there are a lot of tools just inside of nick color effects pro keep in mind as part of the nick collection this is only one of the programs there's also black and white tools there's a program called viveza which does a really good job of enhancing photos particularly for landscapes and travels Perspective effects I showed on a previous video in a comparison with Luminar AI. So there's a, a number of tools inside of the package and they've got different tools within them. So the first thing I want to do here is I want to take a look at her skin. And like I said, her skin is not bad. We don't see blemishes or problems like that. I'm going to come over here to Dynamic Skin Softener. And this is one of my favorite tools because all I had to do was click it. And I'll come over here and I'll grab this little eyedropper and I'll choose a kind of a neutral place on her skin. I don't want to get anything over here where we've got a little bit of a highlight and maybe I'll just choose a drop right there. And just like that, you can see that we've got an improvement with her skin softening. So let me do the compare. We'll do like this is before and this is after. So it's just that fast. It's just really good, really fast. And it's done a good job of smoothing her skin, but it, we haven't lost pores and texture. So it's a very realistic and believable kind of skin smoothing. If you want, there are some tools up here. We can go to Color Reach and kind of change some settings around. You can look at your details, small, medium, and large. And also you have these little control points. This is a, something they used to call it U-point technology. Now I, I guess it's control point technology. And you can kind of get a positive or negative and narrow down exactly where you're going to be putting this skin smoothing. So, for example, if you want to do skin smoothing in different places on her face, you can do that as well. So, if, let's say if I put this over here, there's two settings. This is the size of the area that you're going to be using for that skin smoothing. And this is the opacity. So, if we kind of drag that down, you can see our original photo comes back and we bring this all the way up to 100%. We've changed the opacity there. So here's what we can do. We've got this control point and it's active. You can tell by the color over here. If it weren't active, it'd be kind of like a dull gray. We're going to come up to the menu. We're going to say copy control point. And then we're going to copy that one. And then we have to paste it someplace. So let's paste that and move that one over here. So now this one is the active control point. You can see what I'm talking about. We've got one over here that's grayed out 
and one over here that isn't. So if we select both of them, I'm holding down my option key. Excuse me, I'm holding down my command key, and you can see we've got both of them. So if they're both selected, you see orange over here, and you move this opacity or something, you see how they're both moving. And if you don't want that, just go ahead and pick one. And now, when I'm moving this one, you don't see anything happening or changing over here because since it's not selected, all you see is the little control point dot, and you won't see any changes on her skin. So I can get a different look if I want to using that. And if I don't want it, I'll just go ahead and select it. I'll hit the delete key, that goes away. And then I could maybe take this one, just put it right on her nose, and let's just make this big enough for her face. The place where I would probably put a different control point would be down here below her face because the skin texture is going to be different on her neck. So let's come over here. I'm going to select plus and I'm going to drop it right there and I'm going to change the size. And now any changes I make to that control point are going to be different. So if I want to, I might change some of the details of what we're doing for that control point. And I'm just kind of clicking sliders here. It's not that I'm actually trying to look for something. And it looks really ultra smooth there after I've, you know, changed those settings. But I can always come back and do the opacity. And you've also got this opacity slider here for this setting up top in case you are not using these control points. So let's go back and we'll take a look at our compare and before and after. Now, I'm noticing that right in here, it's really smoothing our skin all the way. It's not hitting on our eyes. It's doing a nice job. It's also reducing these wrinkles. So let's see, what can we do next? I might want to brighten these teeth up. So what would I use for that? There's nothing over here that specifically says it's for teeth. But there are a couple of different tools. And I think the one that I'm probably going to end up using is going to be this white neutralizer. So I'm going to click that. And I just made a mistake. You see where it says white neutralizer? What happened to our... What happened to our dynamic skin? Well, that's because I did not add another filter. Think of this as a layer, as you would in Photoshop. So if you click something over here, it's going to go right in there, unless you add another filter. So let's go back to our dynamic skin softener, and you see that comes back over here, and we don't have our control points. So no worries. We can quickly get this right back to where we were. Something else, don't worry about this tool being used on her white blouse. It knows the area that it's being dropped on, and it's looking for similar tone, similar texture to enhance the skin softening. So it's not really doing anything to the white top. Now we want to go to the white neutralizer. We're going to click add a filter, and you see the dynamic skin softener rolls up. Now we can click white neutralizer. And her teeth look lovely, but it's really changed the tone of everything else. So that's why we have these little control points. We just want to drop this right there, and we want to make sure that that the area that we're having it concentrate on is just right there on our teeth. And again, we can go back and look at our compare. So you can see there's before you didn't really think there was anything wrong with our teeth. And now it's just a little bit whiter. And we can do this with neutralized whites. We can change the setting. We can also get the eyedropper over here and drop it right there. And get just a little bit of a better result. So I'm going to click Add Filter. One of my favorite tools to use here is Pro Contrast. Again, you can use this globally, or you can go ahead and drop it right where you want to. It's affecting this gray background, and I don't really want that. So rather than trying to put it on her in a specific place, what I want to do is select a negative control point and just put it over here and kind of bring that up. I don't really want it on this area. And I'll add another one over here. You confuse me because over on this side, now the slider moved. So you got to look for that little circle. And then the slider, apparently, depending on how close you are to the edge, will move to the other side. And I might do one more down here. I'll bring this up just a little bit so we cover that area. So there we go. You can make your changes either by adding or subtracting. Depends upon the area that you want to make your change on. One of my favorite tools, as well as Pro Contrast, is Glamour Glow. And I almost made a mistake. I'm going to click Add Filter. Now I'm going to put on Glamour Glow. 
And Glamour Glow is just a softening touch. And let me turn this on and off so you can take a good look at it. You can see this is where we are. And it just kind of softens everything. And I really like that. But I don't want it on areas that should be sharp. In my mind, that's her eyes and her teeth. So again, I'll get a control point. Drop it right on her eye. And reduce the size of the area just to cover where I think things should be sharp. And I'm going to create another one to put over here. I could have copied them, but you know what? It's probably just as fast for me to go ahead and create another one than it is to copy them. And finally, one more I'll put down here on her teeth. It makes it look kind of like she's got little laser beams or cannons or something coming out of her eyes, but that's okay. So now let's take a look with turning the Glamour Glow on and off. And you see that her eyes and her teeth don't really change. So we're keeping those nice and sharp. Finally, I want to do a finishing touch to draw attention to her. So I'm going to add one more control point. And I'm going to come over here to darken, lighten, center. And basically this is kind of like a little vignette. So it's going to drop that right on her nose. You see over here where it says place center. I'll put it right there. And you can see how the vignette came out. And we can change, we can make her face brighter if we want to, maybe not quite as bright. Depends on what you want. And you can change the border luminosity. You can see over here we have it kind of dark, and it can get even darker. Or if you really like that bright spot, you can do that. And you can change the size of the center. So depending on how far we bring it to one way or another, it gets smaller or larger. I kind of want a smaller little center. I want it right on her. And let's take a look at... This is where we were, and this is where we are. You can also change the shape. So this is a bit more of a wider kind of, I'm going to call it an oval for lack of a better word. But for this photo, I want to keep things a little bit tighter. I'm going to brighten up her face just a smidge more. And you don't notice it, but it just really brings you into her face. So if we turn this one off and on, you can see there we've got a little bit too much brightness on the edge. And this dark and light and center just really does a subtle job of focusing your attention on your subject. Now, if you want to, you can go ahead and save this as a recipe. So in other words, we have all these recipes that were over here, uh, down here in the, in the recipes just under the filter library. And you can save it as a custom recipe if you want to. And you can also take a look at a number of other things. We can brush some of these tools in. Let's take one last look over here at settings. And I just wanted to show you some of the things that we can take advantage of. So obviously you can select your language. The preview mode, let's open this up. So you can decide, is it going to be whatever you did last? Or do you always want it to go to the single image view, a split preview, side by side? So let me show you some of those. We'll drop this for a moment. So this is our single image view. And we've been hitting the compare button in order to change that. You've got your split preview, which I do find useful sometimes. And it's kind of like that very quick before and after going over your image. Or you can go ahead and look side by side. And most of the time, I want my single image preview. You've got a zoom factor over here, too. So if, if you don't like where you are, zoom in. Zoom in some more. And you get this little navigator window, and you can just kind of move this square around to see what you're looking at close up. If you don't like the background color, this little light bulb over here will cycle through darker, lighter, or gray. So black, white, gray. I, it defaults to gray. I kind of like it right there. And then you can close or hide this little uh, adjustment panel. You can use your tab key or click this little button over here. All right, so we were looking at settings. Let me go back over here. You can define what your preview mode is, what your background color is, what your zoom state is. So all those things that we just looked through with the user interface. If you have a graphics processing unit, just check this box. It'll go ahead and take advantage of that. What do you want to happen after you click OK? So do you want this to be applied to a separate layer or the layer that you're currently on? Typically, I go with a separate layer. I can merge things down if I don't want to. But if I overwrite the layer that's there, I kind of lose everything. Do you want to share information to help improve the NIC collection. A lot of software programs have this, and basically what happens is it sends usage statistics back to the company, and they always tell you it's anonymous. 
Some people believe that. Some people don't want to send any information back. So this is where you can click just in case you don't want your software programs sending information about what you're doing. And then this filter list, you can see that it's got different categories. Let me open this up. And you can take a look at some of the different categories there. And it will just let you decide what you want to happen in your filter list. Do you do landscapes, weddings, portraits, nature, travel, whatever you want. You can choose from a list over here. And you've got six different categories to say what's your favorite. I'm going to cancel that. And that is a quick overview of Color Effects Pro for looking at a portrait adjustment. I'll probably try and come back and do some more demos of this on different types of photos, some travel and some animals and who knows what. As I said at the beginning, at the time I record this, it's early March. A sale just started and it's going through March 28th, 2021. It is up to 30% off. The price of the Nick collection is typically $149. It's now $99.99. I'll put the link up for you if you want to take advantage of that. I'll also make sure that's in the description below. Just click my link. It is an affiliate link. I'll get a little bit of a commission if you choose to buy based upon my recommendation. And this is a program I do recommend. And you will save money. So sounds like a good deal to me. Thank you so much. If you like this video, please go ahead, click the like button. That tells YouTube if I'm doing something right. And then subscribe if you'd like to see more videos and click the bell notification icon if you want to be notified the next time I put a video up. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video.